Good morning once again on a snowy Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God anyhow. Uh, your sins shall be white as snow as it's recorded in Isaiah. But you got to commit to that. Amen. you got to ask God to forgive your sins. Confess your sins to him. And ask God to forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Pete and Dorcas was sitting with you on February the 7th, uh, 2021. A most memorable day for some people. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And uh, we want to look at just uh, the last part of Colossians chapter 4, verse 12 this morning. And we're going to focus upon that. But to give you the background, uh, let us go ahead and read over in, excuse me, once again, in case you don't know, first time you're watching and all that, why is he moving closer and all that? Because I'm near the side of the bat. Not quite. I shouldn't say that. But uh, I need to get a little bit closer to to see what I'm doing. <laughs> And even then, it doesn't count. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's bring the scriptures up on the screen for you. So I can always, you know, have someone that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We're going to read uh, verses 10 to 18 of chapter 4, and you may begin. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instruction. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, that's interesting, watch this, and Jesus, who is called justice. Now, there is more than one Jesus in the Bible. That was a surprise to me when I first got saved. But Jesus is Yeshua, Joshua, very common name back then, but yet not common to us when ascribed to the Christ and Messiah. So Yeshua, Jesus, who is called justice, uh, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are the circumcision. Or the circumcision, they have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brothers who are in Laodicea, and Nephis, and the church that is in his house. Now when the epist this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle of the Laodice Laodicea. And say to Archippus, I like that name, Archippus, and say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. This salutation by my own hand, Paul. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Amen. Now before we get to the message, and very, very simple in two parts, but yet, it, though it's simple in two parts, it's very, what shall I say, comprehensive in your walk with the Lord. I'm not going to keep the scriptures up on the screen. It looks better than my face anyhow. But anyhow, uh, but I want to bring out some things here before I get in the message. And uh, let me perhaps start from the bottom up here. Notice that that epistle, the epistle of Colossians, was to be read at the church of Laodicea. And they would receive the, uh, the letter Paul had sent to Laodicea and read that. And that shows a number of things that back then epistles, letters were swapped back and forth uh, and such. And uh, now, of course, because these things were written on papyrus, we don't have, as far as I know, we don't have any copyright now of the epistle that Paul wrote to Laodicea, but we do have copies of the one he wrote to Galas. Uh, also, I want to bring something out of verse 18. Look at verse 18, and of course, this is off topic, you might say. Uh, you might have heard that because these things were written on papyrus, we don't have any of the originals. My question is, how do you know we don't, or they don't exist? And the reason why I ask that question is, if you do some research and study, you'll see that some of the old sea scrolls are older than the would be the original manuscripts of the New Testament. So, and of course, they were stored in jars. Now, who's to say that maybe something from Paul by the Holy Spirit is not stored away somewhere in a jar? And and therefore the moisture and so on could not get to the papyrus and who knows, and so I think 
uh, it, it could be very possible that we will find an original uh, by the Holy Spirit through Paul uh, before the rapture occurs and maybe after the rapture. And you will see it, it, you know, what you essentially got, essentially got in your in Bible, if it's a good translation, is essentially what Paul wrote by God's Holy Spirit. But we'll talk more about that shortly. Let's move up a little bit here, or back, I should say. And uh, by the way, there is two churches in the area of Colossus, Laodicea and Heropolis. And there were those two right in the area, just, well, I think Heropolis might have been maybe 12, 15 miles away. Uh, I think Laodicea was closer. And then, like we said before about the name of Jesus, uh, Yeshua, uh, we talked about that earlier. But now we want to see what Paul says about the Holy Spirit in verse 12. Uh, focus upon verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prison. Now that's where we want to start. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. And I want to bring some things out about this situation here. Uh, and so on, about praying. And some time back, we've done a number of these on prayer, and we should. And it should be done quite often, because prayer is a very vital aspect of the Christian life. Like, uh, what's his name? Evans says, I think it's Evans. He says that it's like breathing. It's the Christian's vital breath. You stop breathing, you die. And of course, we breathe constantly. And so uh, you should be constantly praying somehow in some way, communicating with God in back of your head and in your heart and so on, even though you're doing stuff around the house, whatever, you're at work, you're communicating with God, at least you're in tune with him, at the very least. And so uh, that that is part of prayer also. But then there's also times of focused prayer, which no doubt this passage refers to. And a time of focused prayer, yes. All right, so look, over here in 12, the second half of verse 12, starting at the second half, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Always, continuously, continuously. Now, by the way, Epaphras is described in chapter 1 of Colossians as a minister in the body of Christ. And if it's, this is the same man uh, that we read about in Philemon, uh, he became a fellow prisoner with Paul. And so this man, no doubt, was dedicated to Jesus Christ and the cause of Jesus Christ. And that's how every Christian should be. And I'm going to emphasize that at this point. This is not part of the message. But sometimes, like we said many, many times before, people just say this in this prayer, and they think they're in and they're okay. And I'm a Christian now. I call myself a Christian, but that's just exactly what the Jews did. Uh, in the time of Christ, they believed that there's the one true God. They believe in Yahweh, and they said they're Jewish. They were circumcised. They followed the law and all that. And same way, but yet they, they really did not believe like they should in Jesus Christ because they did not commit to him all the way. And a person might think, well, I've committed to Christ indeed. But read what Jesus says about being a disciple. You really got to hate your own life. And then you want to walk backwards from that going outward from the shell there of self, uh, your your spouse, your family, your friends and so on, uh, all your acquaintances and all that, they take a lower place in your life. The Word of God does say, Jesus does use the word hate. And of course, that you might say is a relational type of hatred. Can't think of any word this time that would be better than relational, but in other words, or proportional, whatever you want to say. But it's, it's not the type of hate that you're going to throw bricks at people, stuff like that. But it means that God does come first, and you're going to put him first no matter what. Let me get to this, okay? We're talking about prayer. And so Epaphras did not stop because of things happening in his life, nor did he stop because of emotions and so on. And he just kept on praying. Sometimes, you know, our emotions overwhelm us. And a lot of times, too, when we pray, we're praying about a situation, and Satan's right there saying it's no use. Just give up and just throw in the towel, but don't do that. You keep on praying, keep on praying, as directed by God's Holy Spirit. And that's always the best, to pray how? Directed by, as directed by God's Holy Spirit. 
Now, so he didn't stop and he did not release the prayer request. Now, it was 19, in the 1980s, over in Lavelle, Maryland. And I won't mention any names beyond that at this point, but we were in contact with a certain brother who had a certain ministry, which I became part of after a while. And, uh, but he was one of these people that were hyper faith believers and so on. So you pray once and that's it. You pray one time and that's it because if you pray, keep on praying, that shows a lack of faith. Exact opposite of what the Lord said. Amen. Did he say keep on asking, keep on knocking? What kind of knock on? <laughs> or watching something might break around here. Okay. But he said keep on knocking. I might do that on the computer, but that might break too. <laughs> but uh, so he kept keep on knocking. And notice Epiphras here, Epiphras didn't have a lack of faith. He kept on praying. He did not release his prayer request, so he didn't pray just one time. And may I remind you, I probably said this some time back, uh, over in the Gospel of Mark. If you have not read the Gospel of Mark, please do. It's quite unique, even though it's small. It's unique in its own way, although it does have, uh, what should I say, accounts that you find in other Gospels, and even including the Gospel of John at times. And uh, but over in the Gospel of Mark, we see that guess who had to pray twice? You just guess. His name starts with J. Second letter is E. Jesus had to pray twice for a blind man. And you can read about that in the Gospel of Mark. So if Jesus had to pray twice, what about you and me, right? Okay, how about you and me? So he did not give up. Now, along this line, and let me roll this down a little bit here for you. There's a parable, and I bring up the scriptures again on your screen. <laughs> and there is a parable over in Luke. Now, i got to scroll down here. Okay. Now, there's the first line that we're at. Powerful. Prayer is powerful. Uh, let me say this now, lest I forget. And don't. You know, a lot, I, I think I'm afraid a lot of people look at these things about prayer or fasting as, as lucky charms or something like that. Now, I prayed, I pray. You know, you know there's power in prayer. Uh, yeah, but you want to be on the right side. You know, the people do pray to Satan. People do pray for uh, two demons and so on, uh, demonic forces and so on, in Hinduism, Buddhism and so on, and Islam and so on. Demonic forces. So you want to be on the right side, the correct side, and but don't look at prayer as a lucky charm. I pray, you know, you know, all this sort of stuff. All right, let's get to Luke here, and we want to go. To <laughs> good old software problem, you know, all the time. All right, and we want to go to Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. She has it in the New King James. You're looking at the American King James Version. Then he spoke a parable to them that man always ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, There is a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my ad adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, through, though he bears along, though he bears along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Wow, at that last verse, that's kind of scary, right? Uh, we could talk about that some other time, but I do want to look at the word elect here before we continue on. Uh, a lot of people would pride themselves in thinking they are the elect. <laughs> look, this word can apply to a number of groups. First of all, it can apply to the 144,000 
which if you're a Gentile right now and you're watching this video, you're not that, okay? I'm not, I'm not part of the 144,000. No, they're actual Jews. They're really Jews, and you read that old in Revelation. People like to spiritualize that passage the wrong way. Uh, there is devotional aspects to passages, stuff like that. But listen, no, it those are Jews. Those are Jews. And but anyhow, elect, elect. And don't think that you are pre-selected to be saved before you come to become saved and all that. No, you become the elect when you agree to uh, following Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, and mind. Of course, you don't have to, that's another type of elect. That's another group. Everyone that's born again, you are the elect, and you, you stay the elect if you remain in Christ. And so, but notice what the passage says here. To cry day and night to him. One of the biggest cries that should be coming to us right now, maybe two. Either, you know, here's number one. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Please send a revival. And the other one should be, Lord, please return. And I, you know, we minister to people, and uh, I know young Christians, or what should I say, or Christians that have not developed over the years, uh, they can't grasp this thought of Lord come soon. They, they're, they're concerned about their family and friends, or they want to do this and that, that and life. And hopefully they will grow out of that attitude I had to, and so on. Because you realize if this world continues on as it is, it's going to be a big mess. Now, God can send a revival. That'd be nice. Uh, but uh, like we said before, if revival would come, what's going to happen? Okay, people get saved. That's great. That's wonderful. But a lot of times, most of them, sad to say, will backslide. And yes, I do not believe once saved, always saved. That's not really in God's word. <laughs> Where God tells us to hang in there with Jesus, if I might phrase it that way, okay? You just hang right in there with Jesus Christ, and you do not go away. You just don't go away. You hang in there with him, no matter what happens. Don't let the world shake you loose from him. Don't let the troubles of your life uh, shake you loose from the Lord. No, you hang right there in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, so, uh, looking at this phrase once again here. It says, always laboring, laboring, working. You know, prayer is work. Prayer can be work and so on. And, and, you know, you, and you people shy away either from prayer or the reading of the Bible or both. <laughs> Don't do that. Do not do it. If you're saved, go dig, dig into both. Dig into both and all. And I won't go on with any stories about myself at this time. But we do want to see here about, it says, laboring. How? Fervently. Now, please look at this word, okay? And like we said before, our language is bankrupt to a degree. And uh, this word uh, can mean and, and basically the strive, fight, and as translated here, labor fervently. That's James Strong's uh, definition there. And I'm not, yes, is that the, the actual that he has there? Yes, because you see, that's the old way of spelling labor. Uh, some people might say, how come it's spelled that way? Because, <laughs> oh, maybe a hundred or so years before I was born, that's how they spelled it. It stayed that way uh, in the 1800s. It uh, stayed that way for some people. But uh, we now knock out the U. But I want to show you something about that word. Look, look, look closely at that word. Yes, it's a Greek word. But if we transliterate, not translate, is difference. Transliterate means switch the letters from one language to another by phonics, you know, what they sound like and all. So the first part of it, the first, what, three syllables can just about spell agonize. They just about spell agonize. And that's the thought behind this uh, that we have in the Greek. Uh, the backdrop for your definition there, you see people in a race. That was done at the Hyatt some time back. I need to get some more, so I don't have the same people all the time and, and all that. But uh, these people were running a race, and they wanted to win. And I think some of that was done for charity, too, if I'm not mistaken. But I forget what that was about. But uh, 
now you got to enter into you know this this fight uh, against the world system fight against the spiritual forces of darkness and that's not made up that's in scripture uh, all over you might say uh, then to contend struggle with difficulties and dangers and so on and to endeavor to press on with strenuous zeal strive and to obtain something now you might say yeah i want to get to heaven well in this passage deals with deals with doing the will of god doing the will of god all right that's what it focuses upon so yeah our prayer needs to be fervent and so uh we must be earnestly praying as we go before the lord and of course it must be sincere we must mean what we're praying now sometimes and let me elaborate upon that one uh sometimes it's hard to mean what you pray uh especially when it comes to forgiveness and when we know that we're supposed to forgive someone someone and uh so i take uh, a little what should i say lad to with one passage in god's word where there was one man that i think his son or daughter had died and jesus says just believe and you'll get your child back and the man says lord i believe help thou my unbelief and i think we could also take that phrase and say at times uh, when we're having trouble to forgive people lord i forgive help thou my unforgiveness amen <laughs> <laughs> and that's true for everything everything okay all right lord <laughs> i love my wife help me to love her more or him more works both ways right right works for him <laughs> valentine's day is coming up <clears throat> all right all right valentine's day we want to go there okay all right now fervently okay and also prayer is communication and it's not just asking it's also talking to god but when we're speaking with god uh we should do so in reverence now when we're first saved some people don't do this and then they as they walk in the christian walk they never go out of that stance and so on uh if you hear people say abba or papa god if they're not being smart or cute this is how their style is and of course we may you know we may do that also but uh, in the past people have called big uh, god big daddy and so on and <laughs> look you as you walk in the christian faith after a while you realize that okay you're you are god's friend and all of that but that doesn't mean you have to be overly casual uh, and you will learn as you read holy scripture that there's some protocol and as you walk in the lord that uh and you'll see that for one thing if you can when i say if you can you know there's such thing as emergency prayer but when praying if, the, if it's not you know it, you know exact emergency your house your house is not on fire or you're not you know not in a car accident something like that uh you begin your prayer with worship and praise and adoration just magnify his name and then as you pray about that specific need and so on uh you mingle your request your supplication with thanksgiving in your prayer there hallelujah so but it's it's a two-way street and you listen to god like we said earlier in the video here you can always be in prayer by keeping in tune lord would you you know stay in tune with god always keep that channel open with god what a lot of people do sad to say they get so many distractions in life oh it's tonight's super bowl it's tonight's super bowl okay it's, it's it may not be a sin to watch super i say may not because it might be for you maybe god doesn't want you to watch super bowl especially the halftime uh i'll shut my mouth but uh we're gonna say about that lost my trainer thought all the get, <laughs> get off the side point what happens is people get distracted to get into these things and then they're channel that god is disconnected because they're so into what they're watching or what they're doing and so on or they're into politics and all that better watch that be very very careful and i'll say it now as it comes to my mind uh i'm concerned about various people on the internet not just the average joe it's also people like myself ministers 
that are just toying with politics, basically. I saw a picture of McConnell next to a picture of an old lady with, I guess, with his face uh, kind of superimposed, whatever. She looks like him and all that. And listen, no, if you're, especially if you're a minister of God, we don't have time for this. We just don't have time for this. Politics is going to come and go. You don't know what's going to happen in the year 2024 if you are even going to be around, if the United States is still even going to be here, if especially if you are called to ministry. Stop that, all right? The window of opportunity is closing bit by bit under the administration of Biden, Joe Biden. I don't say that in a derogatory sense, but that is the truth. It was closing under Obama. It's closing under, under Biden and so on. Get to work. Tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you, you are, that only took, what, maybe five minutes to put that picture up of uh, McConnell and whoever that was and so on. Well, that's five minutes you just lost to proclaim the gospel message or to edify someone or go pray for someone on the internet. Search for people on Facebook or Twitter to pray for or Instagram. Pray for, I don't think you do that on Instagram or not. But pray for these people. If you're on social media, you make it a ministry and not about politics. And it's not just for ministers like myself either. It's for every Christian. Would you please stop this, this political foolishness and take the opportunity that you have right now before the window shuts, before the door closes, all right? And it's going to happen. It will happen. And so... But people are doing this stuff. And also, what's another thing, too? One more thing here about disconnecting your mind a lot of times from God. You shouldn't do that. I'm afraid people do that with these prophets that are out there. There's so many prophets, uh, it's amazing. Oh, wow. I never thought I would live in a day that I could see all these prophets and apostles. A lot of that is fake. Just read God's word and let God speak to your heart. Okay, now there are real prophecies, there are real apostles, but let God speak to your heart. Don't you're wasting time. Do you really need that prophecy? Do you really need it? What are you going to do with it? You know, the prophecy in the body of Christ was to edify the body of Christ, not make them hyper and all excited and. Oh, look what might happen, all that. That's not what prophecy was about in the body of Christ. Prophecy was to edify the body of Christ. So get some edification, not entertainment. Oh, all right. Now, communication with God, okay? And this also means putting feet on our prayers, uh, listening to his will, not our will. And we have got to learn to distinguish between our will and God's will quite often. And, of course, putting feet on our prayers means to obey God and also realize that God is on the move. Now, later on, when we're done with this little message here, I got a prayer request really to pray for it over in Iran. God is moving in Iran, and he's moving all over, and uh, this is wonderful. And we got to keep on praying because prayer does have a purpose. Amen. But the primary purpose, yes, we should pray for our brothers and sisters that are suffering and so on and, and all that, the persecuted brothers and sisters, but also the main focus of prayer, if you say, or the main task that we do with prayer is that it changes us. And that's the last part of verse 12. Let me bring that up on the screen for you and uh, move it down again. All right. <clears throat> This time I have it in order for once. Okay, it's purposeful. Okay. Now, that you may stand perfect and complete, period. No, that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. No, in all the will of God. Not just some of it and not just the one, the part that you like. To stand. God, you know, God wants you to stand. Satan wants you to flounder flop over and all this sort of stuff, sit down and throw in a towel and all this sort of stuff. That's what Satan wants you to do. But no, no, that you may stand perfect and complete in the in all the will of God. Now, we're going to talk about that word perfect in a minute. But first, uh, let's go 
over to Colossians chapter 1. Once again, she will read it in New King James on your screen, if I could get it right for you here. It is going to be in the American King James Version, so you may begin. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of him, uh, knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all night, might, according to his glorious power. For all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Amen. All right, on your screen now. I didn't transfer it, but there it is. Okay. All right. Now, strength with all might, uh, according to his glorious power. And all these things are fully pleasing him and all that, being fruitful in every good work. This is how we should pray. And to that end, and that's what we want is spiritual growth. Because if you and I do not grow, we may not go. If we do not grow, we may not just go. And you're not saved by works, but listen, if you are saved, you will want to do what God wants you to do. Amen. Amen. All right, so spiritual growth and spiritual success. Let's see, is that word prosper in here? Let me see here. It might be. Did you read the word prosper? I didn't see it. Okay, maybe it's not in this translation. And I don't know about the other one. Uh, that you might work worthy, being fruitful. Okay. But, you know, people talk a lot about prospering today. Prosper spiritually, my friend. Focus upon that. Prosper spiritually. Amen. So, the, you, we want to be perfect in the will of God. And to help us with that, to understand that, uh, let's bring up this other word for perfection or perfect and here we go all right perfect okay teleos perfect all right uh and it's translated very well most times perfect uh man of, of full age and so on but brought to an end finished mature you might say wanting nothing necessary to completeness perfect uh, that which is perfect, so on, it goes on, and you get that idea. It's, it's completion. It's completion when you come right down to it. And so uh, that's what we want to be. We want to be complete in Him and following His Word. Full grown, adult, a full age, mature. So, in all the will of God. Now, perfect in all the will of God. Let's bring that back up for you now. Uh, we just stay right here. Okay. Or maybe I should bring up the scripture for you. Let's look at that again. Let's see here. Move over. Looking at that. Okay. Oh, wrong one. And I want to roll it up to where we're at in Colossians chapter 4. Here we go. All right. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will. Of God and complete means complete every bit of it. You know, there's the big will of God and the little will of God, stuff like that. You want both in your life, okay? And it, it ranges anywhere from let's start from the top, okay? Who are you going to marry? If you sh first of all, should you get married? You better check the scripture on that one. Should you get married? And then what job to get and so on, what house to buy, where you're going to live, etc. These big things and it goes right down to the small things in your life what to wear you know everything even what you think we want to be thinking according to the will of god according to the will of god amen so what you think and so on and so we want to endeavor to do all of god's will and it's, it's not just the big stuff like i said it's also these what we say the little itty bitty things the small ones and uh, we want all the will of God. And once again, ask yourself, is it God's will for you to, to talk that much about politics or fuss with someone or look at all these prophets and listen to and all that? You know, that time is lost that you could have that word of God. Uh, it's lost where you can be praying for someone. No, don't, don't 
you know, the Word of God tells us that in the last days there's going to be people that they're going to tickle their ears with these teachers. And it would include these prophets too that are out there, you know. And I, I'm emphasizing that please do not <laughs> do not focus upon that stuff at all. Uh, what you want to do, you want to focus upon the Lord, you want to focus upon the Word of God, and you want to hear from God for yourself. Uh, Christianity is not a realm of entertainment. It's a realm of edification. And edification does not mean just to make you or me feel good or get our hopes up and so on. No, edification means to grow in the Lord, to develop and so on. And so we want to do the will of God. And we must be careful to do God's will and not man's will. And let's do one more scripture. And that is over in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from, from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of man, but for the will of God. And we may look at that word lusts there as desires of men, what people want us to do. <laughs> That's, this is a good one. There are people that are so sociable and so on. Uh, they're afraid of offending someone. They're afraid of, you know, what people might say about them. And I used to be that way, too. What would people say about me? What did they think about me? And that's exactly where the devil wants you to be and stay there, because then you are being pushed around by the will of people and what they think and what you think they think, <laughs> and so on. And you got to get out of that. And with God's help, you can by focusing upon the fact that if you are saved, you are his child and you are growing in him and you're going to keep on growing in him. And yeah, you will make mistakes from time to time, but God will forgive you. But you focus upon, if you're saved now, you focus upon the fact that you are a child of God and you're going to grow in him. And then also get yourself a ministry. You know, this prayer, this passing out tracts, you don't have to do just one thing. Some Christians are into pro-life quite a bit. I'm, I believe in pro-life. But uh, there's some that are, you know, they go ahead and they, uh, you could say, protest outside of abortion clinics and so on. This is good. If that's your ministry, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, and there are some Christians that deal with politics. That's their ministry. But I don't think it's everyone's. <laughs> and for these people that I know, like in my, I would say my colleagues and all that, that pastor churches or could pastor churches and all that, and we're supposed to be leaders of the, the congregation of God's people, uh, and we're out there making fun of, of political figures, no matter who they are on the right or the left and so on, whether we agree. Yeah, we make fun of them and so on. No, that's not what God has called you and me to do. God has called us, number one, to edify the body of Christ. Really, number one, to make sure that we stay safe. But number two, to edify the body of Christ. Build the body of Christ up. And then the number three, you could say, would be to win the loss for him. I used to have two and three reversed. And the Lord showed me, well, yes, we, you know, winning the loss is important, but then where do they go once they get saved? They come into a congregation somewhere, and some people, many people are very weak. But yet, though, I thank God, though, there are many people that are strong in the Lord. Amen? And that's what you and I want to be. We want to be strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, friend, if you're saved, stay saved. But determine you want to be one that edifies the body of Christ. Not be entertained, but edify the body of Christ. And if you're not saved, we would like you to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you can do so by praying this prayer and meaning it now and for the rest of your life. Not just now, but when you pray this prayer. I'm going to go off on the tangent again because of the Song of Solomon. Song Psalm chapter 3, verse 6. <laughs> Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Like a king against a king. All, that, man. all right. And uh, listen, no, when you come to Christ, you've got to realize you are dedicating your life to Christ. You are making him king in your life. Not when it's convenient, but king in your life at all times. So he's in charge of your life and my life. Friend, if you want to do that, 
Please pray this prayer in me. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I am to him. I give him all, Father. Help me, Lord, to live for you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you prayed that prayer have meant it, as usual, we have a couple of things for you. First of all, we have seven weeks for growth in Christ. That is recording, and it's under 20 minutes up on our internet. Look for that title, Seven Roots for Growth in Christ. And when you do that in the search engine, put that in quotations, and then add to the quote, so on, a space, and then put my last name in there, M-A-C-I-N-E-A. -E and you should come up with that recording somewhere, I hope. <laughs> I hope the search engines are being fair. And then also we have for you a number of lessons, basic elements of Christianity. We talked about this before. There's the address on your screen right now, right below the title, at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash free lessons. And I'm not asking for you to sign in, so we don't need a security certificate. So it will say not secure at the top in your URL uh, address bar there. But don't worry about that. Okay. And any, I get, the, I get the server collects has cookies and stuff like that. I don't, I don't put cookies on my web pages, but the server does have cookies, and I don't know what all they do, <laughs> but they got on there. And but let me show you one lesson there from that. And the very first lesson you'll take would be, and I'll go, I'll go ahead and transfer it that way. All right, I should. All right, so there's the first lesson, it says primary loyalty, and that is the very important lesson, that your loyalty, your primary loyalty belongs to God and God alone, not to your family, not to your church, not to your country, not to your nation, all that, and so uh, bear that in mind. So you just read that lesson, and by the way, now I don't know, I, I can see it. If you look down under number one, always remain completely and primarily loyal to God. Then we have some scripture in red, and then right below that, you have blue hypertext, and uh, I can't read what it says right now, but if you can click on that. See, this is interactive, basically, and if you want to know a definition of a word from time to time, you can click on that. At the very end of these lessons, uh, we have the quiz for you, and they're not all that hard, <laughs> they're all, not all that difficult. And, uh, but we do want to go ahead and check things out for you. And they usually range about maybe 12 questions per lesson. So very easy, I would say. And, but yeah, it's good for you to, to get these lessons. And it's needed in these last days. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, we're Cornerstone Assembly in the Pentecost and Center Ministries. And we usually meet <laughs> when the weather's okay at the, the river. Uh, 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland. And uh, every Sunday night and every Thursday night. I don't know about tonight. <laughs> and I might have to err on the side of caution. So I'm still in line of their head. <laughs> Secretary not you know, err on the side of caution. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The weather's going to turn to rain and all that. And there might be yeah, slush and stuff like that. But... Uh, the temperature will drop, and that will cause freezing on the roads, freezing on people's steps, and so on. So I might have to go with caution and say no church again for this. I won't say that for sure right now, but no church again for this Sunday night. But we do meet, God willing, every Sunday and Thursday at 7 p.m. at the River 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland. Uh, Thursday nights, we're studying the Song of Solomon. We're not even halfway through that yet. It's I take my time. Because there's a lot there, because every single word, every single word in God's word is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every single word. And not the English, and not the French, not the German, not the German. And every single word in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek that's there, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so I, I go along that route to bring you exactly what God has said in his word. By the way, we're not associated with the river. We just rent from them. So, now we'll do our prayer requests, and we're going to do two this morning because we don't know how this weather's going to be. 
and I was looking ahead at the forecast. It doesn't look <laughs> right now. There might be a problem on Thursday, and there might be another problem again next Sunday. <laughs> All right. So, but we're going to do our prayer request now. We're going to do two tonight, or do this afternoon. And let me know. All right. So, what's your first one there? Turkey. International Christian Concern has observed a marked increase of reported religious freedom violations within Turkey since the start of the new year. While most of these recent violations mainly impact church buildings, they also include a lack of interest by the authorities of pursuing and protecting justice for Christian victims. Churches are seen as a source of income, both by the government and by society. Otherwise, church buildings are neglected by the government and often turned into mosques. Pray for this, for the protection and perseverance of believers in Turkey, and pray that the government of Turkey will honor Christian landmarks and churches. Pray for the end of religious freedom violations in Turkey. Jesus, I just pray this morning for uh, the people in Turkey, especially for the Christians, that you might protect them, keep them safe. But I pray that you might help them to continue persevering, regardless of what happens. But I pray for the authorities there that you might help them to honor the Christians instead of to uh, to uh, go against them. I pray that you might just help them to receive you as their personal Savior also. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. And actually, uh, two that are somewhat praise mingled with prayer. And so the first one's going to be from Nigeria. Now, if you remember back in 2014, Boko Haram uh, took a bunch of girls, over 100 girls, and uh, they, they kidnapped them and all. And, uh, but listen to this one. Halima Ali Mayanga, one of the many Chibok girls taken by Boko Haram in 2014, was able to escape the group last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. She was able to call her family on Thursday night while she was in the military, I guess the Nigerian military, that found her. And according to Halima, she was one of hundreds who was able to escape when the military conducted an operation in the Sambisa forest. This is the first Chibok girl to be freed in more than a year. Halima's freedom means that there may still be hope for the other girls, I think there's always hope, uh, who are still in captivity. Pray for Halima as she recovers from her traumatic years in captivity. Pray for the girls who are still being held captive by Boko Haram for their safety and for their chance to escape. Pray for the families of the missing girls. And let me let's also pray that these people in Boko Haram get saved, Amen. or at least fall apart. <laughs> Their little organization falls apart. But uh, let's start with that. Father, pray for these people in Boko Haram that you bind the force, say, and help them, Lord, to come to you. And Father, help them, Lord, to be defeated if they don't. Uh, and uh, help them, Lord, to just dissipate over the course of time. Uh, we pray, Lord, for the girls that are still held captive. We pray that you help them, Lord, to escape. And we pray for the Nigerian army. We thank you, Lord, for what they're doing out there. And help them, Lord, to rescue more girls and, uh, and also get rid of Boko Haram. And we pray to protect the Nigerian army. And we pray for Aliba that you just touch her, Lord, and just comfort her, Father. Pour in your oil and your wine as comfort and healing in her life, we pray. And uh, we also pray for the families of the missing girls, that you help them, Lord, to sense your comfort, and help them, Lord, to seek you, and seek your favor and face, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This one's from Middle East. A pastor and his family haven't left their home for more than 30 days after receiving threats from extremists. The pastor serves in a difficult area of the Middle East, East and has lived under pressure for many years. Recently, an extremist group began sending threatening messages to his phone. Some of the message, messages contain video of the extremists holding large knives and making motions as though they were going to slit his throat. His 
Persecutors also appeared at his front door one day with automatic weapons, but the pastor and his family weren't there. After the attackers left, the family remained at home for a full month to avoid trouble. Lo local police have not been helpful. The bomb workers who spoke to them said his wife was a bit emotional when I asked her about how she was ha handling it with the kids, but they seemed determined to stay there and love their neighbors. Pray for protection and good opportunities for this family. Lord, I just pray for this uh, pastor's family that you might protect them, keep them safe, cover them with your blood, and I pray especially uh, with, for their children that they might not uh, be so traumatized and uh, help them to have peace with you and not fear. Lord, I pray that you might just uh, also uh, be with those that are wanting to attack them. I pray that you might work upon their hearts and help them to hear your voice also and to heed to it. Lord, I just pray for the government there that they, you might help them to uh, be more protective of them when things like this happen. I just ask uh, for your guidance for the family. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Iran. In an Islamic regime where women do not have many rights, God is using women as his brave ambassadors. After someone shared the gospel with Sister A, we don't mean a nun here, we mean a brother or sister of Christ. After the gospel shared <laughs> after someone shared the gospel with Sister A, she became a believer. And was there baptized? That could be written better. All right. After someone shared the gospel, someone, uh, this person became a believer, we'll call her Sister A. She began sharing Christ with her college friends and led several of them to the Lord in addition to her sister. Today, she and one of her sisters orchestrate 27 house churches, meeting in homes across two states. Uh, she has smuggled in 500 Bibles to share with the people she meets and leads to the Lord. Pray for the safety of Sister A, and as you know, his name not being mentioned, for her safety and her sister, and women like them. Pray that God gives them wisdom as they teach and lead. Pray for peace and a spirit of power. Love and sound minds for those serving the house churches in Iran. Father, we thank you, Lord, that these people got saved. We ask for these ladies that you help them, Lord, to be empowered by your spirit, directed by your spirit. We pray that you protect them, Lord. We pray that more Iranians come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, soften their hearts even now, and protect them as they uh, do these Bible studies. And uh, we pray that you give them wisdom as they teach and lead and so on. And we also help them, Lord, we pray that you help them receive that spirit of power, of love, and sound mind, not just them, but for all those in Iran that have received you as their Savior, and may the unsaved see that, and may they come to you. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for your hand of mercy. We pray for our nation that you help each person turn to Christ. We ask that you soften hearts even now and help them to come to you. We pray for those that are fighting sickness help them lord to turn to you for what they need and help them lord seek your favor and your direction father perhaps what to eat and so on what to do but father we pray that you help lord hear voice that your name might be magnified in this earth and we pray for those once again that are dabbling in different things they shouldn't on the internet and so on those that are saved help them lord to realize that the time is short help them lord to sense your holy spirit and the urgency from you to proclaim your word and also edify the body of Christ. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be, <laughs> well, at least maybe Thursday. Okay, we'll see what happens. But so glad you can join us. I say Thursday over at the Tammy Street. But so glad you can join us and come back again. And once again, if you have questions about the Bible, please uh, message me and so on. And perhaps we'll do a Q, uh, question and answer time on the internet. Until then, we're looking forward for Christ coming, returning, and so on. So we say, Maranatha! Maranatha.